But yeah, they start these two things objects will keep popping up in pop culture and different films on it and all over the place. As far as the Spirit of Destiny goes, one of my favorite ones is in the movie Constantine. Uh, this is the one that's starring uh, Keanu Reeves as Constantine. I actually really, really like that movie. The thing is, that, like, in, oh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Actually, so is Keanu Reeves. It's one of the few movies he's been wanting to do a sequel for. Oh, I was like, Keanu Reeves is getting a sequel? Yep. Oh, I thought you were going to say we're getting a sequel to Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Keanu Reeves 2? I'm down. <laughs> the reasoning. Like he's a vampire, he doesn't need it, but like he can be in it. I'm fine with that. He can he can have his own sequel. I love that people were, uh, were like Yano Reeves is a vampire, but no one remembers that he was in Bram Stoker's Dracula. I do. Hmm. Coincidence? What what is it? The uh, devil. The best trick the devil ever played was convincing people he didn't exist. Yeah, he's hiding I, in plain I... sight now. Yeah, Keanu although I really like the, the meme version of that. The best trick that the devil ever pl- ever performed was a 540 uh, ollie. You know, that would be pretty sick. Just a reminder, this is a spoiler-heavy podcast. Different series that require a spoiler warning will be in the description. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Gaming Theater Podcast. Today's episode, we're going to explore the storytelling aspects of two very, very famous artifacts that we have heard all throughout history, the Holy Grail and the Spirit of Destiny. Now, in order for, to take a look at all these objects, I just want to introduce us to some of my guests that are going to help me out with this. Now, once again, my name is Leo. I am your host, the Deep Scorpio. And over to my right it is going to be... Hi, I'm Kate R. K. I am an artist and um, other things. <laughs> you can find me on social media, K.O. Glasson. Great. And with that, over to the, uh, the right. Hello, my name is Dean Dane. I am a uh, content creator on TikTok, YouTube, uh, the internet in general. I'm also was Dice Envy's DM of the Year 2K19. And uh, you may have heard my voice on other amazing GTP products, we'll say. All right. And with that, over to the right is going to be... Uh, you can refer to me as Arm the Red, otherwise known as Nathan. Uh, you probably will not find me on social media. I've been a longtime friend of Leo. <laughs> and over to their right. What's up, Internet? It's Brandon the Tomato Man here, and I do all kinds of little behind the scenes things with GTP, as well as voice and video related stuff. All right. And with all that being said, let's take a quick trip to the Magical Merch Booth. <laughs> Here we are at the Magical Merch Booth. Now, unlike our other merch booths uh, we have, the Merch Booth is going to be out for a little while, mostly because podcaster, the group that's being featured over at Podfort. Podfort is a section of a, of an event in Boise, Idaho, called Tree Fort. And that goes on from t- March 21st to March 24th, uh, or th- over that course of that weekend, from Thursday to Sunday. Within that, there's several different events going on, such as tree for art, music festivals, and various other things, along and even other podcasters that will be there. So if you happen to be in the area, come check us out over at Podfort. If, you, if you're feeling like you're a fan, but you're going to miss the episode, don't worry. We'll get that posted up some point in the future for you. That being said, for now, let's get back to the show. You know, I feel like every, not every time, but some of the times I try to go to the Magical Merch booth, they're, like, doing inventory. And it's just, it's really hard, like, to get in when they're open sometimes. That's the magical part of the Magical Merch booth. You gotta know a guy to know a guy. They don't just give out Philosopher Stones to that's anybody. True. That's very true. Or Holy Grails, yeah. for that matter. Exactly. <laughs> so today what we're talking about is the storytelling, uh, the storytelling aspects that is the Holy Grail and the Spear of Destinies. These are two objects of myth that we tend to put a lot of emphasis in, mostly from how their origins are very similar to each other. However, their origins may be similar, but symbolically and storytelling wise, they have two completely different opposite ends of their spectrum of which of how you discuss that. So just to get started, let's sort of give a short history of when of how this whole thing goes in. So here's a timeline. There's this guy um, about 
shows up really early on in the in the in the eighties, early on after or just after the BCs. You might know him, Jesus. He's a guy. Now, what happens is that Jesus does his things that or in the in the Bible, all the Jesus' stuff. And then we get to the point where he is about to um one of the big events that he has is that he does a sacrament, which is a practice. And he basically tell, uh, has a cup and pours wine into this cup and lets everyone know that this is symbolically, the, this is uh, this is the blood of, of, of Christ for you, okay? Big into Catholicism and Christianity with that. Now, the reason why that's important is that the first cup he does that to is his personal cup that he has, which is one that he, I guess he brought with him, but that it will become the Holy Grail. Now, the short end of this part of the of the tale is Jesus knows that he's going to be uh, that he's going to be betrayed by Judas the Scarlet, and he's going to be killed. That's the thing that he just already knows. So he reaches out to him, bumps into um, a follower of his. His name is Joseph of Arimathea. That's his name. Like I've been saying that all week, and I've just forgotten. His name. Okay. <laughs> So too, anyway. many, too many religious classes. I can help you out. Pew, mm-hmm. pew. <laughs> Every time I think of Joseph of Arimathea, I think of Monty Python and the Holy Grail first, and then the Bible second, which is oh, not no. probably the the supposed order, but it's a hundred percent the correct mentioned. order. It is the <laughs> correct order. Also, Leo, can we get Jesus? He was a guy. Shirts made. I just, I just feel like that's there's something there. Look, I know a guy. <laughs> was it Jesus? Okay. He yeah, guy. Uh, he, he bought me <laughs> from me the other day. <laughs> He's an important guy I know named Jesus. Jesus, uh, he was a guy. It's one of my favorite lines you've said. I think it's it's real good. Anyway, Jesus, buddy, Joseph. <laughs> Jesus, if you dub it down, it's. So there's this dude, Jesus, and he's hanging out with his with his like twelve friends. They're all pretty cool guys. That's, I've, I've heard that. There's like a really cool like picture of the meeting. Except together. for one of them. One of well, them's yeah. not so cool. That's yeah, true. He's not cool. This is Supposedly. not at all related. But since we're a little bit off the rails anyway, uh, yeah. there's a nerdy rapper whose name is Pontius Copilot, and that is the <laughs> best name I've ever heard. Oh my gosh. It's just like, like Pontius Pilate. Okay, yeah, I know who that is. Like Pontius Co-Pilot, though? Like, uh, sorry. Oh, hashtag not sponsored, but I think that's a hilarious name. Yeah, uh, it's great. Which, you know, just makes it make you wonder, though, too. Like, is this the guy that was uh, speaking in Pilot's ear, you know, about yeah. the time? <laughs> yeah, Pontius' like, Co-Pilot. Oh, decisions made, Pontius mistakes made, <laughs> etc. You think if they're next to each other to go, Pontius Copilot, Pontius Pilot, Pontius Copilot, Pontius Pilot. Yeah, <laughs> come in, Pontius Copilot, over. <laughs> anyway, so that being said, um, he gives Joseph the of Arimathea this cup, and he basically, in short, tells him, "Okay, just in case something happens, do you think you can do a couple of funeral rites uh, to keep uh, to make sure to, to take my body?" And him being who he is. You know, you're Jesus. What bad thing could happen to you? Ugh. Um, but if you need it, here's a cup that here's my cup. You can have hold on to this for a while. So he gives him a cup. Meanwhile, Judas does the backstab move. All right. <laughs> I mean, not literally. Just just to be clear. Yeah, not, not literally. literal backstabbing. Figurative backstabbing. Figurative backstabbing. <laughs> it's not a Ju- it's, it's not a uh, Caesar situation here. However, yeah, this is a day, uh, a but yeah. come on. However, he will get a stabbing. That's important for this tale. True. We'll get to that later. Later. So he gets a walk through the town and goes to Golgotha, the Skull Mound. Now, if you want to know a bit more about that one, look back into our episode about uh, talking skulls and skulls and uh, famous skulls. The Skull Mound is a place where just the Romans down there would use as a place to perform crucifixions to people all over the place. Uh, this time we have a big celebrity. It's Jesus coming in on this. He basically made the place, you know. <laughs> that is such a metal place to hang out. Like, hey, you guys want to go hang out at the Skull Mound tonight? <laughs> That's where all the Roman goth kids hung out. <laughs> Straight up. That's where the gold goth kids came out. Oh, ooh. ooh. Anywho. <laughs> So Jesus gets crucified in there, and while he's being crucified, um, they have a Roman soldier named Longinus 
to stab the side of Jesus. Um, from the most reports we have, it's make sure he's dead. I don't want to get this wrong. Um, so he stabs him, but Longinus is also uh, mostly blind in his eyes. When he stabs him, it blood and water comes out, and that blood gets onto his, uh, onto Longinus's eyes and restores all of his eyesight. But the blood never touches the ground. Luckily, uh, Joseph of Arimathea comes in for the save and catches all the blood, off, uh, uh, the blood that's leaking out of Jesus, and puts it in that in the Holy Grail. And then he start uh, takes it down to perform the funeral rites that he needs to. Stuff happens with Jesus later when he comes back, back but that's a different story for a tale. Right now. We have two artifacts, two objects that have touched the, both touched the blood of Christ. They start mentioning that, and this is parts that are in the Bible. The grail itself of catching the blood is listed in uh, Matthew 26, and John 19 was where you'll hear about the spear that's being that. But that's where we get our, these are basically uh, two objects that, are, uh, that have touched the blood of the divine. That is why they have such critical importance to it. Now, the how you want to do a religious, I'm not here to step up on anyone's toes for it. But what I am going to talk about is the story aspect for it. After this moment, Joseph of Arimathea goes on a uh, pilgrimage and takes the, the cup with him. Now, being who he is, he knows the cup is a Christ. The Holy Grail is a very important object. And every time he has to stay at night or ha and takes this pilgrimage, he knows that he needs to go north. With that pilgrimage, he keeps putting the grail in different places where there's uh, guards and, and people, and always he's at guard to protect it. At some point in time, though, throughout the old tales that we have, the grail gets placed with people that he can trust to watch it and protect that until it can go up north. And then the grail just starts hopping around from place to place, but always being protected, always being on guard, and treated with the utmost respect because it, of what that is. It is always on the defensive. Meanwhile, the spear, from what most people, uh, right, Deeks goes with, basically the spear gets put away by some, uh, by well, like Goddess, and he just sort of leaves it there in, a, in storage for a while. It passes around in a couple of hands, but he gets it back and he just shoves it in storage for a while. The, the Spear of Destiny is over there next to, the next to you know, the cups and the silverware I keep. Well, to be fair, he did put it in the chest with the good china that we can't use. Mm -hmm. Now, the legend of the Spear itself basically stays in Jerusalem. And it stays in Jerusalem up until when Constantine take, comes to power in Rome. So Constantine's mom gets a vision and decides to basically make a large archaeological dig in Jerusalem to recover as many artifacts as they can for Christianity. At this point in time, uh, this is when Constantine changing the Roman Empire into uh, Christianity from its old gods for it. And as part of that, they end up going, getting all these artifacts. This is where we get the artifact of the Spear of Destiny. She finds it in Jerusalem and brings it back. Never takes the spear into any battle or anything with him. He just puts it aside as, as one does for any artifacts. It's not until it gets passed around from the Roman Empire to the Holy Roman Empire when it gets in the hand of Charlemagne. Charlemagne, according to legend, will take the spear with him into battle. When he takes the spear with him into battle, he has, I believe the legend is, the, the spear is with him for about 47 different military campaigns. If you have the spear, you are plus 10 to all damage to any character that's coming at you. With a caveat. You cannot lose the spear. According to legend, it, uh, when he Charlemagne falls is because he drops the spear in battle at some point, and then at that point, all of his bonuses have gone away. Rookie mistake. Meanwhile, the Grail moves itself north, and it gets placed with uh, another, uh, uh, where we find it in the Arthurian Tales, is where it next shows up. Woo! <laughs> Kate's excited because this is jam. This is my jam. Mm -hmm. Arthurian legends are like, ah, I love fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to bring up fan fiction in this. So. Yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. get to that in a second. But yeah. Something that I find a little bit interesting about these is historical objects that go missing for a little while, TM, and mm -hmm. then are, are found later on. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to, to yuck anyone's yum. I'm not trying to cast shade on anyone, but I'm going to talk about a couple of artifacts that I think this has happened to, right? And there have been many people who think that the Shroud of Turin mm -hmm. either is the correct shroud, historically, or 
isn't right because there is a period of time where the shroud of turin another christian artifact goes missing i believe during the sack of constantinople if my memory serves about uh, that time a and, lot of and, this will happen around constantinople yeah and then it then is found later on miraculously and i'm not saying that it's not i don't know i wasn't there uh, that i remember <laughs> you weren't there i wasn't i, I missed it you know i slept oh in that day gosh. it was it was a huge bummer i was really uh, relying on you for that dane yeah you know i, I knew it when it was Istanbul, not when it was Constantinople. So it's just, you know, one of those things, I guess. Constantin Istanbul. Indeed. <laughs> uh, and so I just find it very interesting that it, from the historical press and from the historical lens, we see this happen a couple of times, right? Where there's this amazing object that has done this to an emperor, this to a pope, this to a, a deity, not even just in the Christian mythos, but in general. Uh, you know, some of the Japan's holy treasures go missing for a time, uh, relatedly. And then, and then they, they come, come back, back right? Yeah. So we see this all across history, all across the world. And as, like, what, Archimedes. Yeah. And various other famous people. Basically, anyone who's famous or has some kind of cultural significance before the 20th century, stuff like this can end up going missing. 100%. And on top of everything that you're even saying, Dane, I mean, there's supposedly a burial mound in Japan where Jesus lies. Mm -hmm. I mean, where is the dude? He's either there or <laughs> in Egypt. Those are the two most, like, the two known locations of his body, supposedly, that I'm aware of. He and Carmen San Diego have that in common. Yeah. yeah. No, nobody knows where she is. Oh, that's true. No, that's Waldo. I think that really speaks to human attention span. <laughs> yeah. We tend to forget things. And then we're like, oh, yeah, there was that thing over there. Oh, look, a squirrel. <laughs> and that's like just what humans do we're like oh this is a really cool thing and then we forget about it and then we're like oh yeah that guy nostradamus let's talk about him mm -hmm. oh, whatever happened to that guy yeah huh <laughs> he wrote stuff down it was cool <laughs> he made weird predictions um there's also like different objects throughout history and uh, so we put a mythos it's one of the reasons why for the for the holy grail and the and the spear and various other objects we'll bump into well, they are treated as legend because legend by its definition is mm -hmm. it's basically is it a real thing could be is it not could be but there's not enough to say one way or another we think sees <laughs> but yeah no i mean we keep going into that i mean what is it that we've even got legends from the wild west like wyatt earp's pistol if anybody could find the original one which I think he actually had to his, to his grave, but there's a legend behind it because White Earp never got shot in all, every gunfight that he's been in. Didn't he die at a card game table? No, uh, that's someone else. That's um, Wild Bill Hickok, I think. That's where we get the phrase "the dead man's hand" is from because the guy dies at the, yes, at the table. Thank you. That's a that's different person. Cool. No, White Earp. Side tangent, and we'll get into this when I do an episode about the Peacemaker pistol. Why are Earp using the Peacemaker and various other uh, pistols throughout his thing? But the reason why he gets this legendary status, one of the big ones, is he's in multiple gunfights throughout his life and never once gets hit or even grazed by a bullet. And that's almost mathematically impossible, yet that's what gives him his legendary status that he has. He's a Grammaton cleric. He's just uh, the bulletproof monk yep. disguise. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the equilibrium. <laughs> It's part of his, his mythos at this point. He's Christian Bale. <laughs> confirmed. So, now, correct me with my Arthurian tales, because I haven't read up in them for a while. So, the Grail comes into place in a story in the Arthurian tales with the Fisher King, right? So, Arthurian legends are weird, because you have some of the original ones, but we it's kind of like fan fiction throughout the ages, right? You just get mm. more and more legends and they build on each other and then they change and then you get other insert characters like Lancelot, <laughs> French mm. fan fiction insert. Um, and so I did a brief summary of this because it's really hard to like follow all the tales through their different um, versions. It's kind of a mess. I think at some point the Knights of the Round Table go from, I think like, seven to like 12 by the end of it and like yeah might even be more <laughs> like even the numbers of that arthur's there that's the fact that we know <laughs> right yeah something i understand about it too is that around the time with different writers uh it was kind of a 
coming of age right to contribute to the Arthurian legends and mm-hmm. just add to it. Right, yeah. And Arthur went from being a Celtic legend to being a Christian legend, and then, yeah. So it's kind of a mess, but it's a fun mess. <laughs> I think now there's also tales that he's a Roman legend, because the Ooh. some of the aspect is that Arthur, if it, if it was there may have been an abandoned Roman soldier. So I always was, at least the version I had heard, is that he was actually a, him and his band were a captured group by the Romans and fought under Roman control until they seceded from that and then Arthur became king. Oh, see, I thought he was a part of the Celtic group that was on the island and then resisted the Romans when they came over. I've heard it in all those ways and more, so. <laughs> it's probably Arthurian all le- of them. <laughs> Either way, it seems like it's intrinsically tied in between the Celts and the Britons and the Anglo-Saxons. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we hate Rome in this period. <laughs> all I know is that I didn't vote for him, okay? <laughs> look, look, when in Rome, kill the Romans. At, oh, least, no. in, at least whenever the hell this was. But yeah. they're not in Rome. Yeah. We're in England. Yeah, we're in England. <laughs> okay, Why well, when in England, there? kill the Romans there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Grail we know goes north. That we have. That's because of Joseph of Arimathea. We know that's where he goes. His pilgrimage. He goes north and doesn't come back to um, to Jerusalem again. And the Grail sort of gets into these other little short story type things of where it's like. It's given to a person to hang on to it for a while until we can safely move it northwards, and then they keep going that until it gets to the sta- until it gets into the Arthurian legends. Depending on your flavor of Arthurian legend and which way it goes, this can go all over the place. There's tales of the Grail was stored in Avalon, where which will later be the resting sp- place of uh, as Arthur, or it's in Avalon, where Arthur showed up and picked it up the first time, or Arthur <laughs> didn't see it, and Arthur has to go get it as part of his as part of his final trials. Or, my favorite story about this is the one with Galahad, if I remember right. Galahad is, is quested to be the guy who gets the grail. That's his big thing that he needs to do. So he leaves and goes into a quest with the with the Knights of the Round Table, and he leaves to go oh, he's the Fisher King. And when he gets there, uh, the Fisher King's like, okay, only the pure of uh, only the pure of heart will be able to see the Holy Grail. So make sure that you haven't done any major sins, like I don't know adultery or anything. And uh, yeah, it's like okay, I've got this. He goes in. Oh, I see it! I see the Grail, and all of his his carvos. Yeah, yeah, we totally see it. And Lancelot's there going, "You guys are crazy! I don't see what you're talking about." At this point, Lancelot's been hanging out with Guinevere a little while. I was going to say, yeah, he he been he been banging somebody he shouldn't be. So some of the legends um Galahad is actually the child of the Fisher King and um the Fisher King or sorry, the Fisher King's daughter and Lancelot. Mm-hmm. So he's actually able to get the Grail because of that connection and also is able to heal the Fisher King and restore the land of the Fisher King. Um, by asking for the grail. Hmm. A, a lot of these Arthurian legend stories remind me a lot of uh, the Greek tragedies and so forth. There's uh, a lot <laughs> yeah. of similarity, I think. Oh, especially this story about like the Fisher King and his daughter tricking Lancelot into sleeping with her. Like, ew. <laughs> That's gross. It's a thing. So why do we bring this up? Here's the, my point with this, and here's sort of the thesis with this episode. The Spear of Destiny is usually associated with conquest, conquering, and uh, destructive force. You hold it, you can take over parts of the world if you want to, with a price, and you are an unstoppable force. Meanwhile, the Grail has to be protected. Only people who are worthy of it can actually see the Grail. Only the the Grail has to be passed along peacefully with these things. The association with this that we have in storytelling goes in short like this. The Holy Grail is always treated as an object of good, of purity, of your worthiness to have that. Meanwhile, the spear gets passed around as a object of evil, death, destruction, power. That follows the spear to whoever wants to wield it. And we see that in various different forms, uh, different types of storytelling. Some mockery, some not, but with all of our joking aside, that's sort of how the association of, the, of these two objects come into play. 
the Holy Grail we you see in different uh, in different storytelling. Even in like uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, they can't get their hands on the Grail, and it turns out that they have to completely quest for it. They can't even in the beginning when they end up at the place to go get the Grail. It turns out they get run away and have to come back later to go get it as part of a quest. But also with the Grail. It shows up in um, different forms for it. But the Grail is always something that has to be protected. You have to earn it. Indiana Jones and the and the Last Crusade is one of my favorite ones with the Grail on it. You can If you can find the Grail, and you still have to know where it is. So first you have to figure find the last guy who saw it, which is a knight from four, from four to five hundred years in the prior that, ha- that happened to see it. And then you got to go figure out where he, uh, where the Grail's actual location is. And then you still have some trials that you have to understand to get to the Grail. And even then, guess one of these is the is the Grail. The other ones are all crud. For if you get uh, if you guess correctly, you will have everlasting life. However, if you guess poorly, that will be a swift life. <laughs> Your skin will melt off, mm-hmm. and you'll become a skeleton monster that kids will have nightmares about. <laughs> For years to come. For years to come. <laughs> For you have chosen poorly and now you are cursed. They did love their skeleton monsters in Indiana mm. Jones. All Nazis get melted eventually. <laughs> it's a thing. Speaking of, uh, so, and I'll bring this up just once just because it's going to happen on this. One of the more favorite tales of uh, that happens in occult and lore is that Adolf Hitler once had his hands on the spirit of destiny at, at some point. So... Going through the history books for that one, yes and no, he has a spear that's called the Spear of Destiny. He doesn't have the actual Spear of of Destiny. He doesn't have that. That artifact ended up getting moved around during World War II, specifically to keep it out of his hands. Yeah, it was to keep it away from him because the dude was an egomaniacal maniac. Mm. And he, because they wouldn't let him into art school, he felt that anything that was artistic needed to be in his possession. But anything that was uh, towards the end of World War II, he, anything with a large cultural significance, he would end up trying to uh, put a mm-hmm. target on. And it was a real problem. A cool movie came out years ago called The Mind Dispensers, and that's actually a thing yep. that happened. Fascinating so, film, too. Great story. Yeah. One of the things that happened is at some point it was important to make sure that uh, during World War II, the United States has had this, uh, you know, to try to protect as best they can these cultural significance. Because if you destroy a culture from a person, it's uh, from a group, it is much more harsher than to actually destroy the, the people of that group. They were literally protecting history mm-hmm. was what their goal was. See how many uh, different, because of World War II alone, the amount of artifacts, artworks, and just trinkets and things of our archaeological significance is just going all over the place. Yeah. We've even talked about it in our Masamune episode, uh, Masamune episode. The sword itself is missing. I stand by, me and Dane still stand by your statement. It's probably somewhere in the Midwest in some junk pile. God, somebody's attic. Talk about a garage find. Like, I, yeah. mean, I hate to be the guy that says it, but in all honesty, if there if there is a singular Masamune blade, it's likely been parted out. I mean, chances are the pieces were taken off it's been repurposed for things like the the fucking like sidearms in world war ii for the japanese you know, I mean, I'm not, no not for I'm that not, one yeah so that one officially we know uh oh so we actually have the historical record of where what happened that it was supposed to be melted down because that sword would never left the the emperor's side it came to, uh, it was supposed to be melted down and someone jacked it at the last second and no one's seen it from then well, and to your credit, like there are multiple Masamune blades. Like, yeah, also, dude, dude forged a lot of swords. Yeah, I mean, it and is there were a lot a of people claiming to be him as well, who who, who reproduced his work later on. Mm. Um, so, like, there's definitely like a historical precedent of a lot of these swords being out there, right? But mm. there is like this this mythos. It's almost, I mean, at this point, a mythical blade, right? You see it in video yeah. games now. You see it in anime where it's like the Masamune, like it's the one. It's singular now, even mm. though there's like many blades forged by Masamune. I do find it kind of interesting since, since you brought this up, Leo, uh, we do kind of see a similar juxtaposition between the spear and the grail as we do with the Masamune and the Muramasa. And you see this in other cultures as well, right? Where mm-hmm. there is like an artifact of great evil who is said to bring great harm and destruction, grant power to the wielder, etc. And then there's one that is supposed to be more peaceful, like to bring prosperity and that sort of thing. So I think that's 
very interesting that multiple cultures have a myth like that regarding their own historical artifacts. Oh, yeah. There are so many demon swords in anime. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, speak of, of anime over there. Um, There is one that has been constantly talking about the Holy Grail. And this is an, this one that really, they knows a lot more about it than I do. Fate. Fate stay night. Yeah, I mean the Holy Grail Wars. Well, yeah. you you've also got uh, to a lesser extent because it's not hit anime yet, but at least in the manga, um, you've got JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Mm. I mean they they paint it as the uh, the stand arrows are what were one of those was what was used to kill Jesus. Mm-hmm. Well, Jesus, and, yeah, he's in he's he's yeah, in JoJo's. He's yeah, he's a he's canon the character. Here. Yeah, he's got a stand, <laughs> and, that, <laughs> and that's why he came back because you know. The stand arrows cause intense pain and bleeding and blah, blah, blah. Well, and then Jesus came back three days later and was a superhuman with a stand. Um, like and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is not just a misnomer title. No. Um, and even on top of that, it still goes into the Holy Grail element there with him being referred to as the Holy Saint and his body parts are harvested post, you know, his demise and are non-degrading non-decomposing and they effectively act like the holy grail in that they they will cure your illness just by touching the damn things it's like oh you found one of jesus's lungs here touch it and suddenly you're cured of your cancer i mean it's like shit like that in that in that uh, series so essentially these are multiple parts so it's not just one holy grail because the grail is meant to be referred to as kind of a, a vessel a divine vessel that is meant to contain the divinity of Christ and so forth. So it's meant to act yeah, as and, like and a that's panacea, the a wish granter, a source mm-hmm. of power, etc. And and that's referred to as, you know, Jesus himself in the show, or in the, I guess in the manga at this point still, is he is referred to as the holy saint, and his body is effectively the grail of that holy energy. And so his body parts carry that power. That's kind of where that crazy man and writer went with it. Mm. Um, But just like, you know, with there being multiple Masamune blades, there's multiple stand arrows, which were utilized more or less as the, the spears of destiny in the, in that story. And you get something a little similar in the fate series more, more frequently. In, uh, yeah. Grand no, Order, no, it's crazy. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's Nasu is a crazy person, but you know, we love him anyway. Uh, the grail doesn't exist just once and it's you know you're tying things into magecraft and the mage world and so forth where the grail is more of a large uh vessel of magical energy and whatnot which uh in most cases you see in fate is a cursed object <laughs> uh ends up being more of a monkey's paw where you care for what you wish for <laughs> mm-hmm. and and it wraps back around to the arthurian legend there too because saber is canonically or canonically excuse me uh supposed to be uh king arthur yeah that's true and more that oh this was just changed in the stories to suit purposes yeah and so forth of course, of course yeah <laughs> face day changes a lot of different things in its story <laughs> look like, look even arthur's allowed to be a waifu guys mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i guess <laughs> Unless well, you're talking about uh, proto Arthur, then he's just a bro. Yeah, it, it, it depends. Like, which Arthur are we talking about? There's a couple of them running around. <laughs> We're talking Giga Chat Arthur here. Giga Chat Arthur's amazing. <laughs> you got Saber, but don't confuse Saber with Saber. And then Saber and Saber don't get along, but Saber's related to Saber anyway. And let's oh, not no. even bring up Lancer. Oh, yeah, we don't talk about Lancer. <laughs> Rip the goat. Saber can also be a lancer. <laughs> this is this is why I don't watch anime anymore. <laughs> it's wild out here. Yeah, you gotta watch more of it. I watch C dramas. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, th- there's even jokes and dialogue. Like, Your Majesty, do you plan to take over every uh, class role eventually? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is it? Uh, can we have Saber's birth? Yep, Saber can be whatever Saber wants it to be. <laughs> And look, I mean, if summoning a historical figure as a magic user to do your bidding to fight for a wish-granting cup that is allegedly the cup that Jesus' blood was spilled into is wrong, then I guess I don't want to be right, you know? I feel like we can all relate to that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, no, it's fine. And and to, to go with this, too, we're going to just toss a little girl into a pit of maggots and make her go insane over it. Well, I didn't, I didn't say that. I'm just... Look, episode one of Fate Zero is nuts. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a different can of uh, worms? maggots, maggots. If you want to yes, yeah. thank you. I was going to say that there ain't no worms in there. Those are all maggots. They call them worms, but they're maggots. Yeah, we don't get into the hist- We don't get into the history of uh, Kiritsugu because that's a uh, that's a mess. <laughs> and then there's Gilgamesh. Good Ugamesh. He is also in there. Yeah, he's not so bad. I love that band. <laughs> right? They- oh my god. Oh, somebody wrote those music. Okay. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. It's so <laughs> only '90s and early thousands anime or anime con goers will remember. High five. <laughs> oh yeah. So aside from the Grail making a very frequent appearance, uh, mm-hmm. particularly in Grand Order, where you know some event occurs, somebody's probably got their hands on a Grail and mm-hmm. caused some sort of shenanigans to occur that has to be resolved. Uh, the Spear of Destiny does actually make an appearance uh, more recently and only once that I'm, huh. I can think of, uh, which, you know, spoilers lol, uh, you would need to finish Lost Belt 6 Avalon Buffet to know more about that. Oh, uh, man, I got to do homework. Be surprised who has that, although maybe not too surprised. Uh, so, you know, spoilers aside, fair warning, uh, the one that actually holds it is Percival. <laughs> Percival, goodness. nice. I prefer Bedivere myself, but Percival's an okay second. Well, Betty Bro is Betty Bro, so yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Look, you guys, I just know that Lara Croft has it. That's you know, yeah, I, I, I yeah. She has all of it. <laughs> that did make an appearance there, didn't? Yeah, it? yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Does Lara Croft have the world girl? Does Lara Croft in face? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, Spear of Destiny, guys. Asuka uses it in Evangelion, okay? What are you talking about? Oh, yes, Asuka Langley. <laughs> oh, yeah. It works out real well for her, too. Don't read into it. It's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. Stab. <laughs> Look, I'll just go into Persona and uh, we'll fight <laughs> Hitler with it. And- mm-hmm. This conversation has gotten wild. Oh, wait, unless you have the U.S. version, then the not Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the, the legally distinct Hitler. <laughs> What's messed up about all this is that these are all shows and games that have this lance inside of him in some way Uh and reference it and use it as a literary or a plot device. Yep. Seriously. They, they, they all do it. They all do it seriously. They're all like, yeah, this is the lance that killed Jesus. Now go stab Hitler with it. And you're like, all right, I guess. I mean, to to be fair, it's all that makes that like persona Two historically accurate. Cause let's face it. Hitler was trying to get his hands on holy artifacts and it was all just a matter of trying to, give himself funding basically on a back end of things also he was nuts and just wanted them that's all like a whole other you know podcast topic right yeah that's a whole other thing leo and i played through the nazi zombie army games with some friends and like because it's tying into how the you know yeah this is tying into how the germans were very much into the occult at the time due to that influence <laughs> i mean wolfenstein oh yeah wolfenstein that's the whole that you gotta go get that thing out of the, or that's the whole thing and then you fight robot hitler yep mecha hitler thank you mecha hitler why not oh i was gonna i was gonna mention one thing for you yeah. too is because i mentioned percival with holding the lance uh it's actually not considered an evil object in that particular story line huh. <laughs> so where it's more often than not maligned in most places it's brought up in that case, it is definitely not that situation. And mm. it actually ends up being a beneficial item to an extent, aside from how it ends up affecting Percival himself because it's cursed. <laughs> it's interesting that uh, it, the spear of destiny is said to be with Percival. Cause like in Arthurian legend, at one point, Percival is the one who ends up guarding the grail instead of the Fisher King. Yeah. So it- it's coming First of all, it's cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know what, though? I also just remembered that um, the, the final treasure in Persona 5 is the Holy Grail. I just keep that in the back pocket over here. <laughs> you just, it's one of the treasures you can pick up is just the Holy Grail. Well, it's the it's the final dungeon's treasure. So it's like the end game. You're fighting the personification of God because, of course, it's a Persona game. Mm. Um <laughs> Or more spe- or less specifically, of course it is. It's a JRPG, um, and you're a teenager, so yeah, you're gonna go fight and kill God. Yeah, yeah. Naturally, I played Final know. Fantasy before that happens, right? <laughs> you're you're not wrong. <laughs> Only after your shift at the Burger Hut is over, and then yeah. you can go fight God. <laughs> oh I gotta gosh. do my. I gotta work part time because I and to get my courage up, 
for working part-time in this sketchy neighborhood, but then I'll go fight God. But I also have to make sure to not let my boss cast Meteo on me. True. Oh, yeah, yeah. For the good of the world, it's just, you know, pulverize the whole place. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Everything's great at your Junais. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm saying, but yeah, they start these two things. Objects will keep popping up in pop culture and different films on it, and all over the place. As far as the Spirit of Destiny goes, one of my favorite ones is in the movie Constantine. Uh, this is the one that's starring uh, Keanu Reeves as Constantine. I actually really, really like that movie. The thing is, that, like, in, oh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Actually, so is Keanu Reeves. It's one of the few movies he's been wanting to do a sequel for. Oh, I was like, Keanu Reeves is getting a sequel. Yep. Oh, I thought you were going to say we're getting a sequel to Keanu Reeves. Like Keanu Reeves 2? <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> the Reavening? Like, he's a vampire. He doesn't need it, but like he can be in it. I'm fine with that. He can he can have his own sequel. I love that people were, uh, were like, Keanu Reeves is a vampire, but no one remembers that he was in Bram Stoker's Dracula. I do. Hmm. Coincidence? What What is it? The, uh, devil, the best trick the devil ever played was convincing people he didn't exist? Yeah. He's hiding I, in plain I... sight now. Yeah, Keanu, although I really like the either. the meme version of that. The best trick that the devil ever pl- ever performed was a five uh, forty ollie. Oh, yeah. no, that would be pretty did, sick. Did, it was did you guys sick. ever watch the Dracula two thousand movie where uh, Dracula ended up being Judas? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, well, I know of it. No, yeah. I did not. But I am familiar with the title. Oh my gosh! Watch. watch it. It's a trip. <laughs> I watched <laughs> the um. <laughs> The Dracula Untold, which I thought was a decent Castlevania Lords of Shadow movie. Yeah. yeah. I would be doing a disservice, since we're talking about vampires for a minute, if I didn't bring up Dracula 3000, which is yeah. the Dracula film in space. Oh, uh, oh like and... Jason X. Yes, yeah. yes, it's like that. <laughs> but their tagline for Dracula 3000 was, in space, there is no sunlight. And that lives with me every day of my life. That is Except so there is not only true. sunlight. Nope. That's the <laughs> nope. only thing. Mm-mm. That's how vampires get you. They go to space. There's no sunlight up there. It's confirmed. Yeah, well, joke's on you. I have garlic. 2004 movie with Coolio <laughs> in it. I love garlic. Proved it. Same. <laughs> That's why I could never I would... be a vampire, man. Garlic. Dude, I would missing out on garlic. Sorry. Yeah, nope. It's not worth it. I'd I be a help. vampire that likes garlic. Ooh, I like okay. specifically go after Italians because they've got garlic. <laughs> Breaking the mold. You, you gotta, like the yeah. pain yeah. it gives you. It's like lactose intolerant people drinking milk where they're like, yeah, this is going to obliterate me later, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah. 20 minutes later, you're on the toilet for two hours. Oh. <laughs> or like a really strong shot of vodka, right? <laughs> it burns as it goes down. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts so good. Mm. Yeah, just take a pill. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like lactate, only not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but anyway, anyway, Constantine. That's where we yes. were. I was going yes. with that. So, the weird plot of the of the Constantine movie is that Satan's child wants to take over the planet, but in order to do that, he needs to find a loop, a technical loophole. So he needs to find a mystically powerful creature which does not exist on Earth. However, you can substitute it. This, uh, if you happen to have a set of twins, where which you are, both have a psychic powers and the spear of destiny. Sure. Yeah. I mean, naturally. Yeah. You know, it's mixing ingredients. I run out of uh, cane sugar. I think I can make do with brown sugar. I can't really find a powerful uh, mystic. I'll just replace it with the Spear of Destiny and a couple weak sidekicks. Be ca- very careful when doing that with baking because mm. the wrong <laughs> the excess <laughs> liquid in the brown sugar can cause issues. <laughs> you know, if you don't have homemade Spear of Destiny, store bought is fine. Yeah. I disagree with that. <laughs> Others got knockoffs, so it'll a substitute will work, right? You don't oh, have the God. spear of destiny, you have the spear of I. <laughs> Not the spear of destiny, the spear of adequacy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. The spear of it's pretty likely. <laughs> it's pretty likely. <laughs> spear of probabilities. Uh, yeah. Maybe. The spear of maybe. <laughs> It's got to be the spear of meh. So. <laughs> spear of meh. It's like a magic eight ball. <laughs> Ask it <you> later. <laughs> what kind of divine powers does this thing have? It makes people lethargic a bit. And that's oh my gosh. It. But imagine that in like an anime where they have to shake it first and then they're like, oh, nope, can't be in this fight. It says no. <laughs> I have to leave. Bye. <laughs> my, my mom, I mean, my magic eight ball says I have to go home. <laughs> My magic mom ball? <laughs> wow. Magic mom ball. That, that, that sounds like something else entirely. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Yeah, I guess if you're going to have to invoke some kind of massive, you know, powerful incantation, get the right ingredients. I guess that's the moral of this story. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> you don't want to skimp on it. That's yeah. for sure. Don't skimp on your spirit of destiny. The Holy Grail uh, is just hard to find. That's just the thing. That's why we call things the Holy Grail of X. What's Cold Fusion? The Holy Grail of Energy. You know, we don't really do the same with the Spear of Destiny. Yeah, we don't call anything the Spear of Destiny of Energy. That's the Spear of Destiny of Croquet. Like, I, yeah. don't, I don't know what that would even mean. <laughs> the Spear of Destiny of Croquet. It is a croquet mallet that will <laughs> guarantee that you will win every croquet match. However, if you miss, if you uh, miss hitting that ball once, just once, it is over. And it will <laughs> curse you. And you will be mocked for days. Yeah, generally carrying that negative connotation doesn't yeah. really uh, portend to any uh, fortuitous outcomes, you know? Mm, true, true. Yeah. I feel like a monkey paw is a lot easier of a symbol for that oh, kind yeah, of... Oh yeah, the monkey paw always works out for everyone, yeah. right? I was going to yeah. say, for fucking who, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, I do have, in fact, a monkey paw episode. The examples for that are amazing, and they go all over the place. In fact, it gets into some weird twisted metal-like things for monkey paw stories. But that's a different story. I guess if the choice was between a decayed monkey paw, or like a preserved monkey paw, or a really cool spear, I would rather have the spear that curses me than the monkey paw. Yeah, as long as you don't take the spear with you in battle or use it as an incantation, statistically, you're fine. But if you wish for anything with a monkey paw, you're fucked. Exactly. If I walk out of a pawn shop and somebody mugs me or tries to mug me, what would I rather have? A spear or a monkey's paw? <laughs> it I'm depends just saying. on if that monkey paw is strong enough to put it through their eyes. <laughs> That's true. I don't think I'm strong enough, although I could probably wish to be strong enough to put it through their eyes, couldn't I? <laughs> Look, I'm not going to lie. If they reach into your pocket and pull out a spear, they'll be like, cool, nice. And then they'll leave with a spear. But if they reach into your pocket and uh, pull out a freeze-dried monkey arm, they're <laughs> probably going to think you're crazy and leave you the fuck alone. That's true. <laughs> That's true. But I feel like if, if you see a dude walking around with a spear, I might also leave them alone. Uh, that, valid. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, no hate to spear point, users yeah. out there. I appreciate you all. Like Carry, carry your arms in the battle or whatever, but yeah, also... Dude. Dude, I'm a polearm guy, too. I love halberds. It's yeah. the best of an act and a spear in one. It's great, but also it's 2024, and, like, you don't well, see many of those. I'm carry a big spear. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if it grants wishes and makes you, you know, supreme in battle as long as you don't lose it. Also, it also makes you bleed until you die, no matter yeah, where you know, I poke you. I want to know things. if anybody else had this issue with Evangelion when they had the Spear of Destiny, and I'm pretty certain that's just because Evangelion just has biblical terms all over the place. I'm like, sitting yeah. her, I'm using the spear of destiny and throwing a long to throw at this monster. I'm like, that's just a really big stick. That's just a spear. Well, it's a Biden, technically. Yeah. It's not even a, yeah, it's a Biden. It's a double edge. Uh, that show gave me so much confusion because of all the really religious terminology I have in my head that I'm like, wait, what? Oh, yeah. Because I would link it to like stories and stuff. And then I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Adam, the first angel. I was like, uh, okay, hold on. I need to pause the show so I can get this straight in my head. <laughs> How did you do? Not well. <laughs> yeah, that's a mood. Somebody took some liberties. <laughs> what is it? The three wise men are actually their computer servers? They're not very wise then. I thought it was hilariously punny. Look, limitations of RAM will prevent you from doing much of anything. <laughs> I just imagine Shinji reading the Bible being like, yo, this this is okay. Yeah. Trade it in for the comic book adaptation. I, I was going to say that there, there is a work where Jesus and Buddha hang out. They're roommates. It's great. Mm -hmm. I have seen that was the anime where they have like multiple different deities that with the same name, right? I believe so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> To be honest, I do think Jesus and Buddha would get along. Oh, Jesus gets <laughs> yeah. along with everybody. I feel like, like, maybe not a majority of religious figures, but, like, a lot of them, I think, have a lot in common, right? Where they could be like, oh, you too? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, you got murdered too? Sweet. Big same. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Was it your best friend? Dude, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's kind of true, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then Caesar walks up and he's like, you all got stabbed once? Yeah, oh, maybe no. once. Oh. Well, to be fair, Jesus got stabbed four times. And Caesar got turned into literal Swiss cheese. So. I mean, you're not, you're not wrong. You got to be pretty hated 
to be stabbed that many times yeah. is all I'm saying. Was it 42 lacerations? Uh, there's a point where you're no longer stabbing to end is uh, that person. You're stabbing because, you know, what you're in the party. Like, I just need a piece of this. Look, at what point is it considered that you are having fun? Well, do you think at some point they're like, Bacchus, I don't know. I don't know Roman names. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve, please. Stop. Stop, Steve. He's, 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 he's done. He's done, Steve. <laughs> Steve, he's... Steve, seriously, man. That's too many stabs. <laughs> That's the, the meme from... Uh... That old Simpsons episode. Stop, stop, he's already dead. Yeah, yeah, literally that. <laughs> oh and you're, what if you're like the 30th senator to back, back? You know, you're not doing anything. You're just, everyone else is doing it. I need to do this or else to keep my rep. I got to stay cool. Well, and to be fair, 37 of my, my friends. <laughs> yeah, it's 37 You walked times. into my knife 34 times. <laughs> If all of my friends were going to do something, and I was the 37th or 34th or whatever in line, I mean, yeah, okay, like, uh, sure, I'll, peer pressure's a thing. Yeah, now keep in mind, this is Caesar. You know where the Spear of Destiny that he would need? It's over in Jerusalem, and it's in a box somewhere. That That's it. Supposedly. He, like also, I, I will say, if you're the 34th person in line and you don't stab him at that point, mm -hmm. you're probably going to get stabbed 33 you're times. You're, you're probably next, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think the person that was like at the end of the line was just like, well, you've already stabbed him to death, so I'm just gonna like poke him and like say I stabbed him? Because yeah. can you imagine doing a full swing, being the 34th person, and just be like still angry? No, the guy got you, stabbed 30 times. <laughs> do you think they ever give him crap? Like, um, Marcus, you 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 stabbed you were the last guy in. Like he's like, yeah, but I stabbed him. Like, yeah, but like, did you though? <laughs> Did you? I think Agatha Christie really? wrote a story about this called Murder on the Orient Express. <laughs> and then there were none. Wait, none. sorry, it's a different one. <laughs> I'm just going to play the other side. Caesar deserved better. <laughs> 38 times, you think? 34 too little? or <laughs> The number has not been consistent, and I love it. 47 times, I think I heard. Uh, I've got one that tale that says that they literally, st uh, basically, they planned it like on the line. You stab, next guy, stab, next guy, stab, next and guy. And they give each other high fives as they went by each other? Yeah. So it was just a walk by? <laughs> Is it, it, was it like a prison shanking? <laughs> they all shanked the same guy in line? Did you ever see <laughs> the movie Airplane? Yes. Okay, remember when that woman was hysterical and the, everyone in the plane took turns to try to stop her violently? Yes. And they all just slapped her different times. Yeah. So here, here's here, here's a question, now that we're so far afield. Uh, yeah. This is the last thing I say about stabbing Caesar, because that's beyond the scope of this podcast. That doesn't even have to deal with this, Mark, but if, yeah. If you're the 34th person, or whatever number it is, and your stab is not a new wound, does it count? Um, I think at that point, it sort it's of like, depends. I, I, I say yes. Retreading ground you know, at that point. <laughs> you can only stab someone so many times before you're repeating yourself, really. Yeah, Just do a little twisty, maybe. Some twisty They're action. They're getting creative, like bottom of the foot. Like, ah, oh, well, you know, I had to make my mark somewhere. Like, if they all stabbed him in the torso, eventually it's just burger meat. What we're mm. getting at, don't go stabbing people, people. Just please, do us a favor. Don't go stabbing people. <laughs> Or if you do, do it in a variety of places. <laughs> if you, you do, just make it count the first like time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now the only thing that pops in my head is don't go stabbing people repeatedly. Please stick to the weapons and the melees you're used to. What if I'm used to stabbing people, though? <laughs> what do I do then? <laughs> I, I haven't came up with a second game plan on this one. Um. So... Here's an interesting thing that I always love. So the Holy Grail is the Holy Grail. One object, one thing, one name. We call it the Holy Grail. It doesn't have any other names and very few other names for it. I think it's got like two others. One's the Cup of Christ because it's literally his cup. Sure. The Spear of Destiny, though, there is multiple Spears of Destinies and multiple Spears out there. Just um, from a symbology side, we have the Spear of Destiny has laid claim to the ownership of the Spear of uh, so there's a Spear of Destiny in Rome. There's one that is in France. There's one that is... Uh, and a funny story, in the Crusades, somebody, while they were... Uh, during the Crusades, while they were in Jerusalem, they had the uh, a religious priest that was with them, says, we found it! We found it all! We found the Spear of Destiny! And the head honcho priest that's with them for this uh, for this uh, this event is like, we have that back in Rome. Why? What? Why? This isn't a new. This isn't 
Spear 2. That's not how that works. <laughs> he just found it and just laid claim to it. And then they had a priest off, I guess, where mm -hmm. they challenge each other biblically uh, with early quotes. And at some point, I think he tripped, fell, and they're like, yeah, this is not the actual spear, guys. Move on. So it was, it was epic priest battle of history. I need I need to see that rap battle. Yeah. Well, you definitely see this a lot, too. There's, at least I know, medievally, uh, and kind of moving forward into the more modern day, there are a lot of people who claim to have the same relics. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, especially when, like, indulgences and such were being sold uh, at certain points of history. Mm -hmm. Like, there are a lot of people who have, like, Saint such and such pinky finger. Yeah, they collect or, or, the bones of saints all the time. Oh, 100%, all the time. And there are a bunch of people who do claim to have the same relic, which makes sense for pinky fingers, but less so for Spears of Destiny, I think. <laughs> so, there's a funny story on one that... So, a bunch of people thought... So, Longinus was canonized into sainthood, and when he did, they uh, there's a statue of Longinus with a spear in his hand. So people kept trying to jack that spear. It's not the Spear of Destiny. It's just part of the statue. They just assumed it was and kept trying to steal it. So by the transitive property. By the transitive Why? property. Why was he made into a saint when he stabbed Jesus in the side? So you, one of the requirements for sainthood is to perform a miracle of some sort. And it's because Longinus got his sight restored for it. I don't feel like he deserved that. <laughs> is what ended up is the miracle. Like, he didn't perform the miracle. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I guess he... technically by stabbing Jesus and having the blood end up in his eyes. But like, he didn't go in being like, man, I sure hope this clears up my vision. Yeah. Like, this guy got, I don't even know why he ended up getting sainthood. I, uh, the other people who've gotten sainthood, I can get, I could get behind on some of their, their works and such. I understand that. Longinus is not exactly... He almost tripped and fell into sainthood. This is like how like a lot of the female saints are saints because they refuse to have sex with someone. And it's like, okay. Okay. <laughs> sainthood it is. I mean, they did get murdered for it, but mm. I don't know if that makes you a saint or it just makes you tragic. <laughs> I just love this. This I don't know much about saints and Catholicism uh, it, as much as I should, but what I do know is I have a favorite line uh, quote of St. Valentine, and I believe it goes, give me chastity or give me death, but do not give them to me yet. <laughs> yeah. What? Huh. That's okay. I'll take it. I will say, I don't know much about St. Longinus as much as I would like to, mm -hmm. uh, but according to his Wikipedia article, I think, and this is just my, my supposition on this, uh, he was one of the first christian and roman converts yeah oh so i think that might be kind of where they're leaning like yeah he converted and like felt really bad and did this this healing of the eyes thing so we'll give mm -hmm. it to him i guess uh, that makes more sense than just you know being sainted because you stab someone yeah, yeah right I mean, like, no disrespect to anyone who knows more than i do i would yep. love it if you if you have the bandwidth Please let us know in the comments uh, where we're yes. messing this up, because I don't, I don't know this. Yeah, because I'd love to know what's the requirements for sainthood on it. Um, uh, especially with uh, Lazarus comes back from the dead, not a saint. Yeah, but like, like that's special. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's special. Like, not impressed. Gosh. Jesus did that first. <laughs> that, that. <laughs> but I feel like you know, following in the footsteps of literally oh. God's child is probably pretty, pretty cool. Wait, wait, wait. Lazarus, what, Lazarus was risen by Jesus, so technically he came back first. Ooh. Was that Jesus'... Oh, never mind. That, this might be too sacrilegious. Yeah, I think we, we're playing with that right now. But what about um, the donut that's supposedly sacrilegious? Uh, ah! Simpsons joke. But yeah, so those are the sort of things that we... that are here symbolically for... Too. They will always be a quick MacGuffin, basically, for your storytelling of... If you need something that says this person is going to conquer and there's not much to stop them, give them a spear of destiny. Quick place. There's so many video games, so many stories out there that start with, all right, this guy wasn't a problem, got the spear of destiny, now it's a problem. But if you want something to protect or something that you that everyone is going for, you can't go wrong by having the holy grail. 
the Holy Grail of archaeology is in fact the Holy Grail. That's not me uh, me saying that. There was a joke I bumped into a, from a, a, a from a animated cartoon series, which I can't think of its name right now. That made me laugh. If I was to set up a murder game, I would definitely lure people in with the Holy Grail. And then would you stab them with the Holy Lance? Maybe. Just keep it like rounded? Yeah, just keep it rounded. <laughs> I lure in a bunch of people, they fight each other to death, and the last one I kill with the spear, and so I gain even better, like, it levels up, basically. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great plan. Bonus experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was something of note that I think is kind of funny. The Grail, as it's listed, is never as it's depicted, which I find is interesting on that. So, and I say this because... In Indiana Jones, the Holy Grail is a bronze cup, which, as they put it, would be the, uh, the, the the cup of the carpenter, which it's because bronze is your cheap metal, even though it's not, and it, it's kind of weird on that. But um, most grails that we know of, the way that they're depicted, are jewel-encrusted gold cups as the grail, or the grail shape for it. But in most lore, even in Arthurian legend, the, uh, the grail would be made of wood. And mostly olive wood is what it's usually stated as. So the Grail tends to not, we don't even know exactly what it's going to look like. We know it, what it, where it came from, we just have no idea what it looks like. But I was talking to Rob about this once, um, and he's like, I guess if you're going to have a cool mystical uh, item that's been missing for, for millennia, make it gold, jeweled, and crested. Why not? M give it its bling, bedazzle it, make it all shiny. Yeah, that's often how it ends up getting depicted, like, even in Grand Order, like I was talking about. It ends up looking like a golden chalice, mm -hmm. is how its item looks like, more, you know, just for simplicity's sake, anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to say, that is the expensive, cool-looking thing. Um, So, yeah, the Grail could be... Man, I hope it's not one of those that turns out the Grail's a cup in my backyard, and I've just been misplaced it this whole time. Oh, no. That would be... That's going into the junk find of the century sort of uh, sort of place for that. The Spear of Destiny I thought was funny. So the Spear itself, um, at least what most people uh, recognize as a Spear, is actually stored in a uh, museum. I think it's in Hatsburg? No, Hofsburg Palace in Vienna. That's where it is. And it's next to a, a couple nails that are on the cross. But if you ever go to see it, you might notice that there's something missing from that spear because the tip of that is missing. And that ended up floating itself around all of Europe when someone tried to steal it uh, steal it one time. So, yeah, the so the Holy Grail, you uh, it could be anything for it. The spear still could be anything like we don't even know. We don't know the metallurgy puts it back in that taste. But back before especially before manufacturing works, spears were made of entirely different works and almost individualized for it because they had to be tailored basically for the, for the user. Because you would just ask, a, like if you had a sword back then, you would ask a blacksmith to make you a sword and you got what you got. And if you're lucky, someone can replicate a really, really good sword. And you have to wonder, like I know spears typically, you know, metal pointy tip and, mm -hmm. or, you know, some sort of hard, surface and then uh wooden shaft typically right not always you know some use metal some use uh other materials they've got uh available to them i am not a scientist full disclosure <laughs> but <laughs> i i would imagine that like one would um, one would think the wood likely wouldn't have survived at least not in any usable shape oh it would have probably degraded to present day mm -hmm. especially if it's been you know, carried around into battles, you know, gotten blood and water and mud and who knows what else on it. Yeah. Um, so that, I find that very interesting, like much like the, you know, famous ship, how many parts of the Holy Lance can you remove and replace before it ceases to be that? Is it the tip that matters? Is it the whole, the whole spear tip? <laughs> you mentioned the, the, yeah. the tip of it broke off. So like, is it less of the Holy Lance now that part of it has broken off? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What's so funny? <sighs> the tip oh, matters. <laughs> no, no, yeah. it's just the tip. Yeah, just, just the, the tip, tip matters, yeah. I mean, does it? Like, maybe. <laughs> is it the spear tip that matters? Or is it the tip of the spear tip that matters, right? Which, I mean, which... <laughs> according to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, it doesn't matter as long as it can poke you. Sure. 
Yeah. So like you could you could shave off a piece of this holy lance and stab somebody with it, and if that's correct, right? That's correct. And it still counts as the lance. Yeah. The which I don't know that I agree with, but imagine like said, making those into like the needles that you can spit out of your mouth and just like hmm. spit needles at people. Yeah. But they're actually the spear of destiny. So oh, one graze makes you bleed out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you gotta like, get it back. I just find it interesting because, you know, metal can last quite a bit. Yeah. And I mean, so can wood if it's properly treated and whatnot. And maybe maybe by the fact that it's had Jesus's blood on it, bequeaths it certain properties that I'm not known to, right? Mm-hmm. But it does, it does make me wonder, you know, have they replaced the haft of the Holy Lance? And, or is it just like a spear tip in a box somewhere? That's where we get most of our works for it, at least for the spear. The spear of destiny is always the top part of the blade, and the blade itself is roughly about, I want to say, about a foot and a half. It's a pretty big yeah. blade for a spear. Um, so it's about a foot and a half. It was two feet long of a spear of a spearhead that's on top of the uh, on the thing. In fact, um, whenever you see it depicted as in artworks and various things, they rarely put it with a with a. Sh- uh, with a shaft with a with a rod to, on the back end it's always mm. just the, the the tip of the head um and that's it that's the spear uh that's that thing is the spear of destiny also remember having the spear of destiny gives you the ability to conquer it not using it oh that's, so that's fair in the tales uh, in almost every legend of the spear of destiny it's not that they're using it as a weapon or or something it's just that they are the current owner of this and they physically have to have it. I think at that point, having, you know, mm-hmm. as my fellow casters have said, just the tip would be more beneficial <laughs> than mm-hmm. having the whole spear or the whole lance at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, because you could pocket that thing. I mean, it's still a foot yeah. long. Don't get me wrong. That's still plenty of room to work with. But yeah, uh, I do think that that's a lot more wieldy than a seven foot spear. Mm hmm. What's funny is with most of the uh, the legends and lore and the mythology that's around the tip of the sphere that broke off from it, the tip is, since the tip is only part of the sphere that goes through, it's only part of its power that you receive. Oh. So you get diminishing returns, though. You get diminishing returns. You need the whole thing. Oh, okay. Interesting. So shaving it off into needles may not drain somebody entirely, Kate. May just do it, you know, a grievous wound. Mm. It'll, it'll hurt a bit but it's not going to be all that as as big of its power source and even the, from all the lores that's sort of the thing with it if mm. the spear of destiny allows you to conquest so many different campaigns a good portion of europe because that's how charlemagne controlled what france germany parts of Italy, like a like most of the center of europe is charlemagne's domain but if you have the tip you might be able to i don't know get it, <laughs> take care of a city block uh-huh. <laughs> hold this down Oh, we're all children. <laughs> yeah, n- naturally. Yep. Oh, children of all ages. Oh, TTP, yeah, can... where a kid can be a kid. <laughs> <laughs> where a kid can be a kid and your humor might be, might be brought down to a 13-year-old level. It was uh, Toys R Us' slogan, but they went bankrupt, so I think we can use it now. <laughs> I think that's no, how no, works. no, they're back, though. Oh, no, are they? Oh, uh, Toys R Us, I don't know if that slogan's don't... still there. They'd have to re- reacquire it. <laughs> please don't sue us. I'm sure they're listening. Leo can just bleep it out. Yeah, yeah. I'll fix it in post. Oh, the, the GTP where a beep where can, can be, be a beep. beep. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to cut part of this that out. So that worse. just sounds worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going to say just swap the words, but then I realized, oh, wait, they're both kid. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I think that's all I really have is us exploring the symbol, uh, symbol and symbology of the Spirit of Destiny and the Holy Grail. If and that's an important note, so you'll even future stories will all have that. Um, with that being said, what is your weirdest or favorite iteration of the Spirit of Destiny or the Holy Grail that's brought up anywhere on that before we close this out? Oh, Jojo, Jojo, I, I like that Jesus <laughs> is like a super powered, like mega threat to Dio and all of the evil bads. So, yeah, once again. Not just the title. Yeah, there's a reason he's referred to as the Holy Saint. Yeah, I mean, he's the King of Kings. Like, dude can do no wrong. Um, um I don't know if this is a, a uh, Holy Grail. I mean, it kind of is, right? 
there's a very stupid series of episodes from the American cartoon show American Dead in which there is a jewel encrusted turd uh-huh. uh that is golden and it drives people mad and they are trying mm-hmm. to grant it because it's a wish granting you know piece of feces so uh so not holy grail but holy grail adjacent uh here's the thing okay i was going to bring this up at some point american dad yeah there's a jewel encrusted thing but that's more of a weird a jewel encrusted uh turd which makes people drives them insane but is also a power source that can be used if you have the right technology, which nobody has, except for Roger the alien. Of course. So here's the thing with that turd. At the end of its life cycle, will Roger will have it when he... Ha- oh, but at that point, we're in Armageddon when he gets his hands on it. It's one of my favorite episodes. It's uh, uh oh, it's basically the John Carpenter apocalypse episode is what that is. Hmm. Um, no, Rapture's Delight. That's what the episode's name is. Because I'll go back and I'll watch it. The first half is a weird is a is a weird co- comedy section, and um, my favorite line from that. Is, and there's going to be a podcast episode about that too. But my favorite line is, "Oh, well, he tried to kill off all the demons and go into a large war with the angels. Uh, is it going to be bad? I don't know, but I don't want to be around to find out." <laughs> However. There is an episode in American Dad because at some point, here's crazy American Dad fan fiction lore or just lore in general. At some point, Stan in that episode has to be at the end of the time. Uh, Stan helps fight the Antichrist. That's his thing, right? In another episode in the future, it turns out that they have an adopted child, which is the Antichrist. But in order oh. for Stan to do anything about that, he has to, he got kicked out of the church, so he has to join back in with the church. And there's three ways that he could do that. One, which has to deal with, I think, some absolution, which he can't do. The other one is to slay the Antichrist. And the third option is to have the Holy Grail. Oh. So he tries to fight the Antichrist, and he can't, and everyone stops him from doing that because then the Antichrist gets away. However, it turns out Roger has been ceremoniously using a pip cup that for for a crazy juice that he does every Christmas. That turns out to be the Holy Grail. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, Stan, you're back in the church. I just gave them my, that pimp cup I've been using. It turns out that's the Holy Grail. Who knew? So silly. But there's a whole post-apocalyptic war that you have to get to to explain. Yeah, I got the Holy Grail. It's just over here. Sure. <laughs> Why not? What you do. So like yeah, I, I think I think that always you know makes me laugh because it's just it's ridiculous and absolutely absurd. And then probably Evangelion for the spear. Mm-hmm. This might be something uh, Holy Grail adjacent mm-hmm. uh, to some extent. Uh, one of my more preferred uh, JRPG series, uh, Legend of Heroes, in mm-hmm. Cold mm-hmm. Steel Three, uh, the final dungeon is called the Grawl of Erebos, which might be a reference to the Holy Grail, even though it's rather different from it <laughs> to, to say the least i dig that that's a good one uh what about you kate holy grail spear dusty favorable re- reference on that one i mean indiana jones for me mm-hmm. <laughs> it's classic yeah that's a close second for me honestly just because it's so grounded i also like the fact that you can be healed by the holy grail but the holy grail has a cost because in order for you to use it you can't leave with the holy grail Mm-hmm. that guy like that is too. stuck there indefinitely and he knows it i also like like the references to the medieval knights which i was like yes mm-hmm. the writers did their research i love it when the writers do their homework for a lot of things do your homework kids that's the that's the message from today school is important <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to write a story i don't expect you to know everything about a subject we, uh, even we certainly didn't we certainly did. we do as much <laughs> research as we can but we don't get it all but I want you to do some research. I want you to do look into parts and pieces of it, at least. Do your best. And then do if somebody best. corrects you, that's, that's... keep an open mind. Mm-hmm. Unless you're writing it as like a historian, official person that knows stuff. And then please do your homework. <laughs> Make sure you do your homework. Do your research more with that. Yes. That means uh, more than uh, like two days of it. Yeah. Do like a yeah. year, at least. <laughs> If this is the whole book you're writing, do do your homework. But yeah, and I've mentioned what my favorite Spear of Destiny is from, and that's the MacGuffin and Constantine. 
Mm. Which is funny because he has to walk around with a basically a foot and a half long metallic uh, spear head on his back in order to keep it from getting its hands on anybody else. I know we're trying to end this. Uh, have we? Is anyone aware, uh, whether commenters, people listening to this, or or mm. my fellow casters, are any of us aware of a sci-fi holy lance where it's like a super weapon? Mm, uh, I want to say. Kind of with, I mean, if you remember Outlaw Star, for example. Oh yeah, they're, they're oh going man, that's a callback to back. the Galactic Leyline, right? Yeah. So that's kind of a close allegory because I mean that's kind of what I don't remember her name, but the the woman in the case who becomes the the ship Mofina. interface. Thank you. She's effectively like a a, a spear of destiny because she is the key to the whole thing. Without her, there is nothing. Oh, well, that's true. I guess I was thinking more of like like I, Warhammer is kind of where my mind went, where they're like fire the holy lance batteries or whatever. But uh, there is an allegory in Gundam for technically for the Holy Grail, and that is the um, the I we covered this a little bit with the Stone Tablets podcast. The um, the uh, Universal Century Credo, the oh, true. real one. So there is one sci-fi I know that actually messed around with the Holy Grail. It's kind of a, a, a bit of a story for it, but yes, Stargate has the Holy Grail in it. Oh, oh, that's right. Stargate does a lot of messing around with mythology. Well, Stargate is mythology is something that, act, that a lot of mythology can be broken down to something uh, that's happened because it's if the science is advanced enough, you can't tell the difference of it from... from um, if they, uh, from magic. Now Aliens. the thing is that there's a special race in there called the Cool. No, no, no. The the, the, the first guys, the the ones who the gate builders, the ones who literally built it. Uh, the ancients. They're called the ancients because they're the first race. So the ancients are the ones who built a Stargate. However, the ancients also built other things just to mess around with it and uh, just to, for funsies. So in the Stargate lore, it turns out. Merlin is a guy named Myrden and is the last person to leave, uh, last of the ancients to actually leave Earth through the Sadargate. Um, yeah, Myrden is uh, the ancient name of Merlin too. So exactly, yeah, yeah. And now, so with tie, that, tie it back around to the Arthur. Bring it back around. <laughs> so actually, this also will bring it back around. It turns out um, King Arthur and his knights were actual knights that followed uh, that followed Merlin. And Merlin needed their help to go to different worlds. So when they're in their Arthurian legends, the reason why you can't find it on Earth is because they're not on Earth. They left and went to from world to world and world and eventually came back and buried Arthur. And they buried Arthur in a tomb where uh, where that's or the tomb's nickname turns out to be Avalon. And that's where you uh, they find the, the relics and information to get through it. All this is to say to try to... Uh, uh, part way to Atlantis and it's the difference. Uh, one of the ancients actually created a super weapon. Its device was actually to help people ascend to make it easier on them. And that's the Holy Grail. Oh, interesting. But yeah, so I remember it because I've watched Stargate oh, way too much. But yeah, but that Stargate is it has one that they do as the Holy Grail and they actually call it the Holy Grail because that's actually its name. Yeah, um, the villains of the Ori is very much Christianity inspired for that one. Um, because they follow the ancients as the types of prophets, but the one guy comes back as an ancient, it's a whole thing for it. But yeah, <laughs> they do, that's where they actually have the Holy Grail as a as an item that people are actually hunting that down for. That's cool. So I'm up to one. Nailed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been zero days since Geek Scorpio's talked about Stargate. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that in itself is about it that I can think of on this. So with that being said, and uh, our next episode will be released on the 15th of March. The Ides of March is when we release it. Wow, that's hilarious. Of, uh, Caesar is a lot more appropriate now that I think about that. Uh, hey, hey, Leo, what are, you, what are you doing that day? Do you want to meet up for a little bit? No reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so are we going to meet up game? <laughs> yeah, we, we just thought we would all get together, you know, a little uh, GTP party. Yeah, definitely don't turn your back to us. I mean... Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely do turn your back to us. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, don't worry about the knives. Yeah, they're okay. for cake. Oh, cake. oh, that makes perfect sense. It's not like there's 30 of you, right? 
Well, we needed we each wanted to bring our own knives. We're very health conscious here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sanitation purposes, we all wanted to have our own utensils. It can't be spreading diseases, so yeah. 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 Don't worry, Leo. If something if you got to need to have plans that you know suddenly come up to take you away from this event, I got your back. Oh, <laughs> to our men. <laughs> oh man. i now I really hope I have the holy grail in the garage somewhere. Yeah, good luck, man. I mean what? What? Huh? That that's just weird to say go I mean or, you, you know, you could have the spear as long as you're holding it, you know. Yeah, you just don't drop it. your way through your opponents, right? What are the odds of him yeah. dropping it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's his drop rate? <laughs> what's, the, what's the drop rate? Um, it's a pretty it, it doesn't drop very often, but I mean, it's a pretty good item to get and it's I think at least epic tier if not. Oh. Is this an SSR out of the gotcha of, of the world? <laughs> are we talking like sub 10% or are we still in the 10 percentile? Uh, it's got to be sub 10% for something right. this powerful. 0. 0.01? <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, no. It's it's the one where you have to buy like 400 drops and then you maybe get one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't give out two of them. There's only yeah. one in the world that we know of. Although, despite what other people might say. I, too, have the Spear of Destiny. No, no, Leo, that's just a broom. Once again, you just glued something to it and hope for the best. It's the ring card for Magic the Gathering. Yeah. <laughs> all that being said, glad you guys all came in. Thanks for uh, listening to us. And this is Gaming Theater Podcast. Logging out. Bye, everybody. All. Bye. Peace out. Bye. Take care. Gaming Theater Podcast is hosted, created, produced, and edited by Leo Garcia, the Geek Scorpio. Our music is A Drinking Game. Stock media provided by Stormwave Audio slash Pond5. Our cover art is by Adam Parker. You can find him at ParkerGFX on Twitter. If you want to send us some money to help with these episodes, you can do so at Patreon.com slash Gaming Theater Presents. Want to send support that doesn't hit your wallet? Please leave a review with wherever you hear your podcasts and share our podcast with your friends. It really helps out. Thank you for listening.